Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Shine Wealthy. I am Chris Williams, and I'm here with Kendall Summerhawk. I am so super excited to have this conversation with Kendall. Kendall is one of my mentors. I've actually been through several of her programs. I am certified as her money breakthrough business coach, as well as Sacred Money Archetypes. It is amazing. And um, I'm just really excited to have her here share her brilliance, her wisdom from over 20 years in the coaching industry. Like you are one of the OG coaches in the coaching industry. <laughs> this is like really a gift to be able to have access to you live. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm delighted to be here with you. You know, it's actually 22 years that I've been in business. It's just, and I think I keep, I keep saying I started younger and younger and younger. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So OG is OG is fitting at this point. I'm thrilled to be yeah. here and, to, and thrilled to be talking about women and money because that's you know as you know other than horses, money, women and money is the topic near and dear to my heart. Yeah, absolutely. And you do you know one of the best jobs sharing this information very generously in your Facebook group as well as you know helping other women. Um, coach entrepreneurs and yeah. helping them make more money too. And it's, it's just an amazing program. So I want to ask you, you know, when it comes to women and money, I know that, you know, what are some of the things where you see, you know, wellness entrepreneurs kind of getting hung up on, on um, allowing themselves to even just receive money? Do you see it most happening in underpricing or not being able to confidently ask for a sale or what, what keep are going, thoughts? keep going. Yes. And yes, oh, yes. I keep going and keep going. <laughs> I think that, um, especially when you talk about wellness professionals, you know, wellness yeah. professionals, and I'm going to speak, um, I'm going to embody as a group. Yeah, uh, please. so it's generically, but it's, but it's embodying wellness professionals as a group. And while I am not a wellness professional, I am really into wellness, as you know, so it's, it's a, it's a um, group of entrepreneurs that's near and dear to my heart. I think that um, people who come into the wellness industry come from this real heart and soul place. I mean, all women want to help other people. And I think that's just who we are as women. But I think that there are certain professions and wellness professionals are certainly one of those professions that really attracts women, you know, people in general, but specifically women who, who are very nurturing types, who very, you know, want to care, they care for people. And so I think that there's, um, you know, so then there's a tendency to, to uh, mistakenly intertwine or enmesh this idea that if I'm here to really help people and I'm here to really care for people, then how can I serve? And mm -hmm. I, that's a mistake. It's a mistake and it's actually a myth that isn't true. Um, I think it's, you know, if you want to get really esoteric about it, I think that it's a, um, I think it's almost a primal type of thing where, cause it's kind of a mothering type of energy, you know, the nurturer type of energy. And it's like, well, you don't pay to be mother. You just, you know, you just, you just help people from a caring yeah. part of the place. Yeah. So that really then, 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 so from an internal standpoint, there's this like, there's whatever self dialogue is going on about not charging and, mm -hmm. and, and then not charging is more than just I mean, there, it is literally not charging, which I know a lot of wellness professionals like just don't charge. Um, yeah. But I think it's also, it manifests as, you know, charging very little, you know, giving away a lot of service for very little, or maybe stepping into charging somewhat higher fees, but still then massively overcompensating by, uh, you know, over, over giving, over delivering, over nurturing. And I think then it can manifest as um, a lot of guilt and mm -hmm. some shame. I think for, my guess is in this field, in the wellness professional field, it's more guilt than it is shame. I think in other fields, it can be more shame than guilt. So, um, so yeah, so it all, and, and, then, and then it's compounded or exacerbated by the fact that as an industry, and, and you are such a beacon for this, Chris, you know, a beacon of standing up and saying, hey, people, you know, we do good work in the world and we are paid well for mm -hmm. that, you know, um, but it's exacerbated by the peer pressure, you know, that the stand, the industry standard that I know you are really flipping the switch on that through your work with your master classes and your, your um, group that you run, um, that 
it's not okay. You know, everybody else, nobody, I don't see other people doing it. Therefore, I don't want to do that. I don't want to stand out as being the tall poppy, you know, the tall mm -hmm. poppy in the field and be that, that person doing that. And that's a mistake. Again, it's a mistake. And, yeah. um, you know, I know the word shine is a really important word for you, you know, and your brand and who you are as a person. And it just struck me that it's really um, a willingness to, you know, to be paid is and paid well and to really um, be on a path of uh, be on a path of wealth and wealth accumulation, I think is a form of allowing ourselves to shine fully. And I'll, and I'll say this too, because, and I think this is the most important thing here is that when we diminish, this is my, like, you cannot convince me otherwise of what I'm about to say. When we diminish some aspect of ourselves, our life or ourselves, in this case, we're talking about charging, making money. When we diminish some aspect and it's a vital life force aspect, right? Charging and money. When wow. we diminish some aspect of ourselves that way, we diminish all of ourselves. You cannot uh -huh. diminish one part of you at, uh, or your life and expect to shine and thrive in every other part. It just doesn't work that way. We are whole beings, whole body beings. So you cannot, if you diminish one aspect, you are diminishing your entire self. Holy cow, that is powerful. It's so true though. If we are not owning our own value in this one area, then we're also not gonna own our own value in another area. Even though our value is innate, right? We don't have to earn right. it or work for it. That's that's not something that, you know, that I mean here. Yeah. But I think that, you know, one of the things that I see at least in uh, the coaching world and and which is absolutely what, what you know, the, the women that you get to serve, me being in the coaching world and, and being one of your, your people and being in the community is that I see a lot of, of the same undercharging, not charging an appropriate price, being afraid to say their prices, not sure, you know, like, mm, well, it's mm, like not even, sometimes I have had people who have gotten off calls and they've not even made the invitation. They've not even asked for somebody to work with them because they're afraid to say their price. So this this has to change. It has, <laughs> has to change. change. It has to change. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. So, so the thing is this, is that this is again, over nurturing, over caretaking. And, and, you know, one of the things I talk about a lot is don't jump into someone else's wallet. Don't jump right. into their wallet. So getting off a call and not making an offer, why in the world would you deny someone, a potential client, why would you yep. deny that? I get really fierce about this. Why would you deny them the opportunity to be changed and transformed through your coaching? What, you, what? I mean, forget all the yes. stuff about you're in business to make money, you've got to make money to survive. Let's just set all that aside for the moment. You, yeah. that's someone not even making an offer because they're, because they're afraid to say a number seriously. And I, and I want to say, get over yourself. This is a, this is a uh, really, because what's happening yes. is, and I see this a lot with people who are deeply caring people. What happens is that they're feeling all these emotions and they're not doing the work to process mm -hmm. through them. And they're not doing the work of just practicing saying their price, saying their mm -hmm. number. The first time you say it shouldn't be on the phone with a prospective client. That should not be the first time you say your number, for goodness sakes. You're not setting right. yourself up for success. You need to practice saying your, your, what you charge. But anyway, but it's, um, now I lost my train of thought. Oh, so they're with, often with very sensitive, intuitive, uh, very highly empathetic or sympathetic people, they, they can get very, um, very self-focused and I got, you know, very self-focused and yet you, you want to help people, but you're making it all about you. It's like, no, get over yourself. Stop making it. I, you know, I've been saying this almost since day one in my business. It's not about you. It's about them. It is yeah. not about you. It's about the person you are here to serve and how dare you rob them of the opportunity to create, to have, to experience the health, the, the weight loss or the the health transformation or whatever it is that they want to do for themselves or their family. How dare you rob them of that opportunity because you have a chicken moment of, of not wanting to say your price. Really? What are you yeah. prioritizing yes. there? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. I, you know, here's a, here's the thing. And I, and once my, once I got this, this was like a, such a huge game changer. Once I stopped making it about me yeah. and instead made it about 
what is the transformation? What is the desire that my client is looking for? And I have such a good example. I just want to share this here because this finally like clicked for me. I remember the first time I actually offered somebody into like a six month VIP experience with me. And I was having a conversation with her. She had heard me talk at, uh, at a hospital and she reached out to me like a month later and said, I heard you talk. I really want to work with you. These are the things that I'm struggling with. And um, so I hopped on a call with her and she was telling me everything. And I'm like, yep, I could help her with that. I could help her with that. And then she said, and I don't have a job. And I thought, okay. So the first thought in my head was she doesn't have a job. So there's no way I, you know, I'm not going to offer her like the, the thing, like, let me just give her my $97 offer, you know, <laughs> and I didn't, I stopped myself and I said, wait a minute, Chris, is this in the highest service of her? Mm -hmm. Is this going to help? Is this one session going to help her lower her anxiety, lose the 50 pounds that she wants to lose? And I'm like, no. So why would I offer that? to her just because I think she doesn't have the money. Right. And in reality, which is what I didn't know, uh, you know, she was actually starting a new job the next month and she actually wanted the whole shebang. She was like, I want the six month experience. I want everything and here's my credit card. And by the time we finished working together, holy cow, she was completely different. So if I, you know, had made it about me right. and my uncomfortableness and not being willing to take a look at- And your assumptions and your assumptions it. about her, yeah. right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, and I was that, that one thing at the very, very beginning of my career was like stuck with me forever because I was like, wow, look what happens when you get out of your own way and you truly allow it to be, how can I best serve this person? What is the offer that's going to really have to get her right. desire? Not what is the lowest priced offer because you think they can't afford it. So that I want to, I want to just pinpoint that, put a pin on that because in that, because that is so valuable. The difference. I want everybody watching this. Notice the distinction in the question. So say it again, Chris, everybody needs to hear this, what you said, yeah. what you asked instead of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I asked how, you know, how could I help her get the result that she was looking for? Right. So how what was the best service to her yes. rather than what's the lowest Me. price offer? That's exactly. it right there in a nutshell. We're done. We're, our work here is done. <laughs> <laughs> what's in best service to her. And I think, and I'll add on to that, that you have no idea you have no idea what's happening on the other side for that person. You have no idea how much they, how deeply they desire it. How, what are they willing to do to get it, to, to work with you? You have no idea how just saying yes to coaching with you automatically creates an incredible transformation. You have no idea of their money resources. You have no idea. It's not your business. You, yes. You're not privy to that. And yep. so I really, and, and having experienced, I'm sure you've experienced this as well, having experienced um, saying yes to being in coaching programs when it was so, it so far exceeded what made sense, what I had money for at the time, what my nervous system was prepared for, you know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, and, and I've done it and I haven't done it willy nilly. I did it very um, consciously, very consciously, very specifically. And every time I've done it, it has, you know, where I've invested in a, in a coaching program that was, you know, above and beyond what I, you know, should have or whatever. It has kicked my butt from day one, kicked my butt. And it's not always been fun or pleasant, but, you know, the emotions that I knew that it was the right thing to do. And when I think about if that coach had had not made the offer, if they said, no, this isn't the right time, you don't have the money. I mean, first of all, it's like, excuse me, you don't know my life and you don't know me or what I'm capable of. And so, uh, you know, when I think about if that had happened, how, I wouldn't be here today with you. It's only because yeah. I allowed myself to have those experiences. So we have to allow our clients to have those same life transforming experiences by saying yes to coaching. And you only get to, they only get to do that by you making your offer. Start high, work your way down from there if need be, but start high, yes. start with the proper, the, the appropriate offer for that person based on their needs, not on their yeah. pocketbook not on their purse. Exactly. Oh, oh my gosh. I really want you to talk into this piece that I think is so important for people here. And that is when people make an investment, when people say yes to themselves, mm -hmm. the transformation happens immediately. Yeah. And I know that to be true. Like I know, like I know, you know, if I, I am grateful for the coach that was a stand for me when I first was like, I don't know how I'm going to pay you. Like literally I have a hundred dollars in my bank account. I know I want to work with you for a year. 
$10,000 was like way at that point out of my price range. I'm like, yeah. where, I don't know where I'm going to get it. I didn't have any room. And she absolutely could have said, you're right, Chris, when you find the money, when you save the money, when you, whatever with the money, you know, when you can afford it, come work with me. Mm -hmm. She didn't. She was a stand for what was what is possible for us to create when we put our mind to creating what it is that we want, what it is that we value. And it's because of that that I'm at where I am in my business, because I was able to say yes and step outside of, well, my bank account says no, or step out of whatever circumstance my brain was saying, oh, I can't afford it. Well, guess what? I created it and I was able to, to create it as I go. So this, this transformation truly does happen when we, when we allow our clients to say yes and when we say yes too. And I think it's a balancing act, it's interesting. Do you, do you happen to remember what she said, anything specifically she said that got that, where you said, yes, I'm yeah. gonna do this. Yeah, so I remember, um, you know, one of the things that she um, said, you know, as she was coaching me was, you know, back on what is it that I desired, you know, mm -hmm. she was she came back to, okay, what is it that I want to, to do with this? And I remember she was saying, I'm a stand for you. I'm a stand for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not a stand for your circumstance. You know, circumstance right. is circumstance, right. but I'm a stand for you. And just because the bank account says no, doesn't mean that you can't still have what it is that you want. And we actually just brainstormed them like, help me figure it out. Like she, she, I was a yes first. And I said yes to the investment. And I said, right. and then she was like, and great. How are you going to come up with just the next month's payment? Like yeah. I didn't have to come up with the whole shebang at once, but she was a stand for helping me step out of the scarcity mindset of I can't and into this is totally possible if I want it and let's figure out a way to make it happen. And I think that it's, um, thank you for relating that because I think that it's, um, I was going to say it's a bit of a balancing, but really what it is, because we don't want to pressure people. We don't want to pressure them and say, well, what can you go sell or what can you do this? But I'm a big believer. Yeah. I'm like, go in your attic or your garage and sell, sell shit. <laughs> yeah. Pull it out and sell it on eBay, yeah. have a yard sale. I mean, I've done that before. I like looked around and said, okay, what can I sell to make money in order to get, you know, get money moving, but also in order to pay for this thing, like you get resourceful, right? Yes, but I yes. think, so I think that the thing is in the conversation, when you're, uh, when a coach is having a conversation with a prospective client, what we have, and Chris, you know, we talk about this in certification is we, we have this concept called passionate detachment. And mm -hmm. so but with passionate detachment, you are a stand, you are fully a stand because we also, our core philosophy and all the work I do is we will hold you as powerful, no matter what, even at moment in moments where you can't do so for yourself. So we will hold you as powerful no matter what. And that coach did that for you. She held you as powerful no matter what. So when, and that's part of passionate detachment is when you hold someone as powerful, like, is this a yes? Set the money aside for just a second. Not about yeah. the money, set the money aside. Is this, a, you know, is this something you want to say yes to? And you're listening for a congruent, full throated bodied yes. And if it's anything but that, it's not the money, it's something else. Yeah. But yeah. if it is that, it's like, okay, now let's, now let's talk about the money and let's see what we can do to make this work. But you can't, yeah, yeah you know, we don't, I mean, you know, and you know us, we don't pressure people, but um, so we don't want to be pressuring, but we do want to hold them to having a breakthrough and expanding what they believe is that they're capable of. And I think yeah. as women, you know, women, we are capable of so much more than we realize and so much more than what society has held us um held us to, you know, a lot society holds women as being capable of a very narrow margin of skills or abilities. When, when the whole world is available to us, we are capable of so much. So, and yeah. that includes finding money to pay for coaching when it's something yeah. somebody really wants. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that also was the difference. Like I knew that I was a heart. Yes. I wasn't like, I right. know, like, I was like, I, I'm a heart. Yes. For this. Yeah. And I'm not sure how to pay for it. So your, your yes it. was separate from the money. It was separate yeah. from the, it wasn't, yeah. yes, I want to do this when I have the money. That's not a clear. Yes. That's yeah, a, no, that's, I'm putting circumstance first. And that mm -hmm. is in the, in the most subtlest of ways. That's a victim mentality. It's a victim mentality. Mm. very subtle but it is still victim it's saying i'm not i my circumstances will control my future and i'm yeah. a person who says no circumstances will not control my future i i i you know these circumstances may be far less than ideal they're not what i want i mean i've been in some tough tough places in my life really tough and i 
you know, I, even though they seemed, you know, it was pretty dark, dismal time, they, I did ultimately did not let circumstances define me. I want to circle back to something though, that I think is so important is that about practicing saying your number. Um, you know, we have yeah. an exercise in certification, the pass assault exercise, where you want to practice saying your number out loud, not just in your head, out loud, like a hundred times, a hundred times, not over a month, a hundred times in one day. You just want to say, great, you know, this is what we're going to, this is what's going to happen for you. This is how we're going to work together. And the investment, it's not a price. It's mm -hmm. not a fee. Um, it's not an amount, it's an investment. The, and, and it's not just playing word games here. It's really understanding. If, if you don't believe that somebody co coming to coach with you, that they're investing, then that's what you need to work on. You know, you need yeah. to work on that. But yeah. that then the investment is X, whatever it is. And you just walk around saying the investment is, and whatever that number is, you say it so many times that it's as easy as being at the dinner table saying, can you pass the salt? You know, mm -hmm. can you please pass the salt? You say it so many times, you trip over it, it doesn't matter, it gets easier and easier. So that when you practice saying it that often, what happens is that you, um, you acclimate your nervous system to it. Mm -hmm. you, you're, you're imprinting your subconscious to where this is just it. Like, you know, my eyes are blue. My eyes are blue. To coach with me is the investment is X amount. That's just what it is. You know, yeah. it's, yeah. it's just a statement of fact. I love that because that also gives you such confidence and certainty. And, you know, when we talk about the energy behind, you know, running a business too, that energy of confidence and certainty is what is going to convey trust and confidence in the client who wants to work with right. you as well. It, it, yeah. it, it conveys that. It conveys, um, yeah, that you, you have confidence in yourself. There's a calmness to it. And um, people, you have to also remember, again, don't make it about you, right? Um, people get excited to buy things. <laughs> you know, they get excited to invest and they might be scared. I mean, when I invest in a coaching program or training, um, it's, it's usually not about the money. That's the issue. It's, it's I, if I, I, I invest in stuff that I know is going to change my life. And these days in my life, it scares the living daylights out of me. So I start to have panic attacks. And now I know that a panic attack means I'm doing the right thing. It's like, oh, I'm, and I'm not kidding when I say panic attack. I'm not using that phrase lightly, full-blown panic attacks. And it's like, well, I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing the right thing. It's not a, sig yeah. it's not a no signal. It's a yes signal. <laughs> because our brain is like, ah, don't change. Don't do the thing. Oh my God, exactly. And, um, and so, uh, yeah. And just by recognizing that and not believing the story of the panic attack, then, mm -hmm. um, you know, cause that's just a story. Uh, yeah. that my brain is telling my body and, you know, by not believing it and it, it tends, you know, I can process through it pretty quickly. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. I want to also just kind of circle back around with the last, uh, you know, few moments that we have on the other end of the, um, undercharging piece, which is the over delivering piece. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I know one of the things that you, you coach on and that you're very, very clear about is we don't have to continually kind of give away all of this time. Like, no. you know, you, you no. train on, you know, let's, you know, 30 minute calls mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and can you speak about that other side of the, of the not valuing whatever it is. And so you're, you know, putting in, you know, all of this extra time and all of these extra, whatever yeah. it is. I think that it's, um, and as a chronic over deliver, I will say, I, you know, I've looked at this a lot. I think it comes, you know, when you're brand new as a coach, you just kind of don't know, you, you know, you're figuring it out. And, but yeah. as you get a little bit of experience and you, you want to look at what your motivation is. And so, often over delivery is um, from a place of not good enough. You know, it's from an insecure, a place of insecurity, not good enough. Let me put in a lot of time and equating, which is common in our culture and a lot of cultures um, around the world, equating time with value. If, you know, gosh, if I'm charging this much, I must need to give them more. And that's yeah. not true. That's not, that is not the proper math. Okay. That's not the right math at all. And I think from a place of deeply, you know, I come from a place of deeply caring about other people. And very often what I see coaches doing is putting so much stuff into their coaching sessions, you know, to, I mean, into their coaching packages, too, too many sessions, too many things, too long of sessions, 
too many things inside of a session. It overwhelms the client. So from a, and I think I really broke that pattern in myself years ago by view. I chose to view it as an act of unkindness. And as you know, you know, Chris, kindness is such a huge value for me. So I had to look at, I said, you know what, I'm not being kind to someone. That's an unkind thing to do to put somebody into overwhelm is unkind. I'm not going to, I'm not that person. I'm a kind person. And so I, that really helped me feel good about less, less, less and giving people an opportunity to process and, mm -hmm. and not, not um, unhooking the need for my sense of fulfillment and my sense of getting an add a girl, unhooking that from, you know, like, like to get that sense of fulfillment and get that sense of um, joy and that I'm doing a good job to really understand that in myself, to, to separate that from pouring more into the sessions or more into the packages. Like don't mm -hmm. be, cause that, it's kind of a needy way to be. And I'm really into not being needy at all. You know, yeah. I want to foster independence in my clients. I want to foster independence in myself always. And I want to leave space. I know I'm talking about a lot of concepts here at once, but I want to leave space inside of the sessions and space inside of the package for the client, for us to go deeper, for the client to actually, um, have time and energy to to process to implement to for us to go deeply into their successes their wins to go deeply where they need more support so um i i mean i could go on and on but it's um i really look at over delivery we have to look at why are we doing that and if you say well because i think they need blah blah, blah. no 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 turn that around what is it you're needing what is it mm -hmm. that you're needing that you think that this is going to fulfill which it's not going to fulfill i got to tell you you need, mm -hmm. you really need as a coach, one of the things I started doing early on um, is looking at how to get my needs filled outside of my coaching sessions, outside of my client relationships, so that I wouldn't come into those relationships needy. Yeah. You know, I could come with passionate detachment, show up full, full with a full open heart, full with and full energy and focus. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um yeah, because I, as you know, I believe coaching is one of the most intimate relationships that we create in our lives. And I want that to be a clean, healthy relationship. So how do people understand, like, what is, I mean, you teach this inside of the, the certification with mm -hmm. some beautiful uh, templates of, you know, what is included, mm -hmm. what to include, you know, either in a VIP session or, you know, three months, six months, 12 months. But when somebody's trying to put that together, how do they know what, if it's too much versus? I think you always start with what the outcome is. What's the promise of your package? Always start yeah. with what the, what is that promise? And you better be a clear promise. Not that they're going to feel better or be healthier or whatever. No, no, no. You have to have a very clear promise and being willing to commit to that. Now the client has to show up as well, but it's a hundred percent, hundred percent. You have to show up hundred percent. So start with the end in mind always. And then I look for, um, you know, I'm a big believer in uh, initially for the first couple of two or three years, maybe of coaching, I think three times a month is fine. Um, I think as you get more experience, you can do more, better, deeper quality work in less time. So like to coach with me is twice a month. Um, uh, so I think that it's looking at what are the steps? What's the end? What are the phases or milestones that, the, that I want to guide this client through? See how we're parsing it down? I'm not saying how many sessions. I'm saying how, what are the milestones to get them to that end result? And not it, you, you've got to resist the urge to have their, their, their entire, like 50 pounds in six months. You wouldn't do that. You know, you right. wouldn't coach a client to do that, right? It's going to take more than six months. Yeah. So don't try and cram it all in. Give, it, give a promise you can fulfill believe in that promise, commit to that promise. What are the milestones that go into that, uh, achieving that promise? And then within each of those milestones, what are the exercises? What are the things that you want to coach on? And, and, and look at it that way. And I think it's also just deciding what you want your lifestyle to be. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's like three times a month, first three weeks of the month with the last week off. That was my that was my schedule for uh, many years. And then twice, then the same schedule only um, twice a month. And uh, it's just has been a really nice schedule. So when you commit, when you commit with 30 minute sessions, when you commit to a, um, a structure that serves your lifestyle, then you make it all fit with that. Mm -hmm. Yep, I do the so same. Would, yeah. Three weeks so, on, one week off. And I, yeah. I actually 
that, you know, for people that, you know, think that that's not possible, you're totally possible. I, not only is it good for me, but it's good for my client because yes. they have time to integrate the information. Yes. And my yeah. clients are really, really thankful. You want the Even clients if- to be a little hungry and yearning and wanting to come to the session, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God, mm-hmm. I have so much to talk to you about. I have so much to share. You know, you like, you want that eagerness or let me tell you what's been going on. You know, you want it to feel rich and full and it's okay to end sessions with more to come. Yay. That's called job security. We joke, (laughs) you know, (laughs) we don't know. I need to solve everything in one session. (laughs) I love that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, leave them wanting more. It's great. It's people want to feel that anticipation and desire and yearning. That's a great feeling to create in clients. I love it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's like being with the fire hose, giving them too much information, and then they don't know what to do or how to do it. Yeah, and then there's yeah. no information, and then there's no results. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I love this so much. Kendall, what do you have coming up? I want people to hear kind of you've got some amazing things coming down the road talking about energy and strategy of building a business and yeah well of course we focus on um uh either sacred money archetypes which i'm the creator originator of that it was channeled through me a long long time ago um and so you can always go check that out at sacredmoneyarchetypes.com nice long title um but what we have coming up is a a free multi-part master class uh, that is business made feminine and it's about the energy and it's it's the energy and strategy of how to start coaching women entrepreneurs. My whole thing, my mission is to put the power of making money into every woman's hands. And the way that I do that is by training and certifying women to be coaches, serving other women entrepreneurs. I want to, I want, I mean, the the explosion of women entrepreneurs across across the globe is unbelievable. I was looking up some statistics the other day. It's unbelievable. It was already get growing. And because of the pandemic, oh my God, it's, it's like a whole other wave of explosion. But, um, and I want every woman entrepreneur on the planet to be able to have a business coach, preferably one certified, trained by me. Um, so, yes, so you yes. can go to, <laughs> um, so Business Made Feminine is the, ener- the, stra- the energy and the strategy of how to start coaching women entrepreneurs. And you can register for that at kendallsummerhawk.com forward slash coach. So if you go there, kendallsummerhawk.com forward slash coach, then you can, uh, it'll take you to the proper page to, um, register for that. And we always have certification, you know, the money breakthrough business coach, certified coach training, and uh, you can certainly ask about that. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. It's so good. Anybody wants any information about that? I can absolutely tell you as a matter of the things that I adore inside of that is the branding with archetypes that you teach us how to yeah, seriously. I mean, yeah. I love sacred archetypes, and and my clients and I also just get so much out of the brand. Well, and you've done so much with the branding with archetypes. You really, um, you took them and ran with them, and you've done. I mean, I love it when you post about the workshops you lead virtually and in person with the branding with archetypes, and just the looks on your clients' faces. They're they're. I mean, they are just beaming and lit up from the inside out, and it's it's gratifying to see that work being used. I love it that you, you, you know, you're an expert in it. There's no doubt about it. I love it. It's so much fun. Truly, you know, it's not just, oh, how do I make money? This is Mm -hmm. truly something that I love. And I think that's one of the things that you, you know, distill in your certification programs too, is this gets to be fun. We get to be Mm -hmm. well-paid and we get to have fun and we get to do things that really light us up. And it's just, it's just amazing. I really, really am so grateful. I'm so uh, thankful. You're welcome. You're welcome. World. Yeah. Cool. All right, everybody go to the hub. Uh, you've got the membership hub inside of the Shine Wealthy portal. Click on Kendall's information. It will take you right to her website and also to uh, the any freebies that we're giving away um, that Kendall is going to be sharing. And Kendall, is there anything else that you want to share that feels important for women who, uh, anything that, that you are like, you know what, I really want to like say this thing. I, I, the main thing I, I love to end with is that I really believe making money is part of our spiritual path. And, and let me correct that, making fabulous money is part of our spiritual path because of, and I'm a ruler archetype, both in my branding and my sacred money archetype. So it's, yes. yeah, you know, it's ruler girl. So it's like, we're, we're going to help you make the money. Let me tell you. Um, yeah. 
but I, I because there's uh, because how you as I've said for a long time how you do money is how you do everything. But when you when you embrace making money, when you really put yourself on a path of, of wealth creation in whatever numbers that means for you, then uh, what happens is you have to face your stuff because money is a mirror, and you have mm. to face your stuff and um, and and mm. clear that junk and gunk out and get more and more wholly fully you. And because it's really impossible, just I think almost impossible to help lots and lots of people and be broke. Like those two things don't go together. And yeah, so I yeah. see people saying, especially in the health and wellness industries where they want to help a lot of people, but they're broke. It's like, well, you, you know, you've got to embrace making money. And, and yeah. as you embrace it, you will help more people because money comes to you through other people and through the value that you're providing. You will always provide amazing value. You will always do that. Be assured yeah. of that. You, how could you not? You're you, right? And so, um, so that's it. Make, making fabulous money is part of our spiritual path. And, and I think that when you embrace that, you go, oh my God, I've got some work to do. And, and do yeah. the work, do the work. Because you'll help more people and you'll make more money. And when you make more money, you're helping more people. It's this beautiful cycle. It is so beautiful. I love it. Thank you, Kendall. That's you're welcome. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you All for right, having everybody. me. Oh, thank you for being here. It's always such a treat for me when I get, get a chance to chat with you live. All right, everybody, thank you for being here. And we will see you back here for another day of Shine Wealthy, the Shine Wealthy Summit. Again, be sure to go into the membership portal, go get the freebies, go click on Kendall's information. If you are interested at all about coaching women entrepreneurs, this truly is an amazing program. I can vouch for it. It's <laughs> one of the all time best ever <laughs> programs out there and if you reach out to us make sure and re mention chris's name because we'd like to know where you came from so mention chris's name to us yeah thank you all right everybody we will see you back here soon take thank care <laughs> bye